Okay, so who is um, everyone here today? Um, I, I would assume that um, some people are digital marketing professionals. Who, who would they say they're digital marketing professionals? Or two? <laughs> and a half. <laughs> okay, not, not many. Um, newbies, so people who really don't know much about online marketing, digital marketing, SEO at all. A um, few more of them. And um, a few somewhere in between, know a little bit, yes? Sir? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, how would I describe myself? Well, um, thankfully I would describe myself as a digital marketing professional, um, but however, um, nobody knows absolutely everything about digital marketing. It's such a, a, a changing uh, field. Um, you, you can think you know absolutely everything and then have a conversation with someone and know someone um, knows a lot about a particular topic. Um, so uh, what are my main areas of expertise? Um, well, SEO, I started off um, really getting involved with SEO and being able to rank websites um, you know, fairly high in Google quite quickly. Um, content marketing, um, that is actually the writing, um, audio, uh, video, getting content out there and getting people to visit your site um, because of the content that you've distributed elsewhere. And also digital strategy as well. I really like understanding different types of digital media and how they fit together and what's best done first. Um, so a little bit about my background first of all. Um, so I've been involved with digital marketing for quite a while. Um, started off in um, the year 2000 actually. Um, and um, that's me in the year 2000. Um, I launched um, an online restaurant guide. Um, and that's where people could book um, online. Um, and it, it really went well for a while, but you know, after a while the business strategy wasn't quite the right time. Um, so long story short, the business didn't quite work out, but that's where I got my grounding in digital marketing. I, I really um, got interested and um, you know, fast forward a couple of years later, 2004, and by 2004 um, I was making you know, a decent amount of money online myself. You know, so you know, a couple of years, within that couple of years I was figuring out how to design my own sites, um, how does everything um, fit together, um, how do you actually make money out of websites uh, in terms of advertising and how do you drive traffic at websites. Um, so by 2004 I was making about £500 plus a week, um, you know, $1,000 it was because obviously you, got, you tend to get paid in US dollars online. Um, so and that was doing fairly well for me there by about 2004. Um, so by 2005, 2006 um, I attended a few different networking events and uh, people started saying to me, well, you know, how are you making your money and how, how are you managing to do that? How are you managing to get these sites ranked to the top of Google for very competitive keyword phrases? So by 2005, 2006, um, I ended up providing quite a few SEO services for different people. Uh, a couple of companies coming to me and saying, um, you know, will you do what um, you've done for yourself for me? Uh, but by 2007, I was getting quite frustrated. Um, I, I didn't enjoy the fact that there were so many sharks in the SEO world. There were so many people that said, pay us $99 and we'll build 100,000 links to your website and we'll get you ranked overnight. Um, because they were preying on website owners or people who wanted to make their website successful online. And it just didn't work or certainly didn't work long term. Um, so I, I thought it was very, very important for people within businesses to get comfortable with digital marketing. Not to do everything themselves, but at least if they didn't want to do everything themselves, where they could actually manage an agency um, with a bit of knowledge behind them. So by 2007, um, I started doing different seminars. And I was doing you know, quite a few seminars across the UK. Um, 2008, um, what I did was I launched um, one of those seminars as a, a DVD, CD and um, workbook home study course. Um, and you know, I got lots of great reviews. I, got, I, got, um, I sent this product off to a few top bloggers um, at the time. Um, so uh, Chris Garrett, if you're starting out in internet marketing and do not know which way to turn, the system will give you a comprehensive step-by-step -step overview. So, so, so that's you know, great feedback to have. Uh, Yaro Starek, um, Entrepreneur's Journey, is a really f famous blogger. You know, fantastic down-to-earth internet marketing home study course. Um, so, so that really set me on course as a digital marketing trainer. 
Um, 2010, 2011, what I wanted to do was relaunch everything because everything changes very quickly. And if you have just a home study course, um, then you, you can't really update things. Um, so I turned the course um, into an online training platform. Um, and these um, you know, CDs were, in effect, videos that were online. Um, everything you could do online, you know, a blueprint, a step-to-step uh, action plan. Um, and I, you know, sent you know um, for reviews again. You know, again, so I've got some great reviews there as well. You know, comprehensive training course. You know, should be added to the armory of any company that's serious about building their internet presence. Um, so really, really happy about the kind of reviews that I had there. Um, but what am I doing now? What, what kind of current projects am I up to? Um, well, Digital Marketing Monthly magazine um, is something I launched a few months ago. And Digital Marketing Monthly is an iPad-only magazine. And um, I've already got you know, well over 1,000 readers of that as well. Um, so that's a really you know, great way of distributing your content on the iPad now. Um, I'm also distributing um, books on the Kindle as well. Um, that's um, the new 26-week uh, digital marketing plan, week one competitor analysis. So I'm, I'm delivering each week um, in, a, in a manner that people want to actually read content in, because people don't necessarily just want to log on to a website and, and see all the content on that particular website. If they're on the, the tube, um, if they're traveling somewhere, then they can get it the way that they want to see content. Um, I'm also in the process of completely relaunching the 26-week digital marketing plan yet again. And you might have noticed the name change from internet marketing plan to digital marketing plan. Um, a couple of reasons for that. Um, one is, um, I think internet marketing is very associated with make money online um, kind of type products. Um, and I don't want to be associated with that because um, this is um, a step-by-step -step system that you can apply to any business, any conventional business. You know, sure, you can actually build a website and just make money online if you want to. But you know, if, if, if you own a, a shop somewhere or have another type of service business, then this is a system that can apply to that. So that's one, one reason. Uh, and the second reason is digital marketing is much more than online marketing now. Um, digital marketing is you know, through your Kindle, through your iPad, and that can be read and accessed offline uh, when you're traveling, when you don't have internet access at all. So I think digital is, is a much more appropriate name now. Um, but um, I'd like to talk today about the four phases of digital marketing. Um, now, the four phases are basically what I call the, the framework uh, behind the 26-week digital marketing plan. Um, and that starts off with phase number one, software and structure. Um, phase number two, get social and turn on the tap. Number three, broaden your base. And uh, number four, broaden your horizon. Um, so let's um, crack on with phase number one, software and structure. Um, now, the first thing that you need to do is select your host and CMS. It's important to start off at the very, very beginning, uh, get your hosting right, get your content management system right, um, how you're actually going to access your website and manage your content as well. But your hosting needs to be absolutely spot on. Um, There's so many case studies that I've done recently for the new 26-week digital marketing plan training material. Um, you know, I've, I've had about 10 people that have said to me, you can use my website um, as a case study. And um, I've put their website through different tests. And um, it's taken 10 or 20 seconds to actually load the first page. And that's absolutely terrible. Um, you need to be better than five seconds load time. Um, so selecting your host, getting your content management system right to begin with is absolutely uh, imperative. Getting the design right. Um, so you know what kind of themes or styles um, you're going to actually have on your website. Um, optimizing it for SEO and tracking and measuring and testing, knowing what your goals and objectives are when you actually come up, uh, when you set up your website to begin with. So starting off with which host? Um, well, there are a few different options. There are, uh, there's a shared server, your own server, or a VPS. Um, so a shared server is probably the most common one. Your own server um, is the most common one for really big companies. And VPS, virtual private server, um, that's kind of a middle ground. Uh, so having a look at shared server to begin with, uh, probably one of the most common ones is HostGator. 
Uh, host gators start off at $3.96 a month, so it doesn't seem much at all. Vida Host, um, it's a UK-based one, £2.99 a month. Um, I've, you know, used both of them, and I, you know, kind of thoroughly recommend both of them for actually starting off. Um, Vida Host um, is great for a UK-based business, because one of the things you want to do is actually have your server ideally based in the same country where the majority of your target audience is. Um, because that's a little signal to Google that um, if the server's there, then your website is more likely to be targeting that particular country. Um, so that's Vidahost, just $2.99 a month. So if you're just starting out and you don't have many visitors, then that's probably a good option for you there as well. On the other end of the scale, uh, you get your dedicated servers. Um, you're probably starting off about £600 a month. There are, there are options less than that, but if you're talking about a big business, then that's the kind of figures that you will be talking about. Um, in between, um, you've got Gandhi.net, which is a VPS. Uh, a virtual private server, and that starts off about £9.50 a month. Uh, now, there are lots of VPSs, and um, Gandhi is just an example, but I'm using Gandhi as an example because that's the um, service that I use to actually host 26weekplan.com. Um, starts off at 9 50 a month, and what you can do is you can select um, different nodes different levels um, of VPS. Um, so how much RAM, how much storage space, how much processor power you actually get. So it's a virtual segment of a server that you get. Um, and that really, really is excellent because um, what it means is you get all the power um, of having your own server and you can, you can choose how much of that server you have. Um, I, I really like this website called Web Page Test. Um, which I use to actually see how quickly web pages load. Um, and you can see here 3.442 seconds, so 3.4 seconds um, for the home page of 26weekplan.com. Uh, but look at this repeat view, not 0.4 seconds. Um, so whenever someone refreshes the page or goes back to the page, uh, because the page has been cached and stored in their computer, uh, then it only takes 0.4 seconds to load. Um, so that's just a breakdown of all the different files that are loading there uh, and the repeat view there. Um, so that's the kind of performance level you should be looking for. Um, less than five seconds for your first load time, less than a second for your second load time. Um, if you start getting above 10 seconds initially and your repeat view isn't better than five seconds or so, you're probably pu uh, putting people off visiting your website. They'll click on your site, you know, see a little, you know, round thing that goes round and can't be bothered, go back, um, so they'll um, go and visit a competitor instead, instead possibly. Um, so use that to test your website. Um, so selecting your host, obviously you've got budget to consider, um, server location, server speed and reliability, and software. You know, what kind of software you actually want to run on the host to begin with. You begin with. So th th those are the things to consider initially. Um, moving on to CMS, this content management system. Um, how do you actually want to use the server? Um, I, you know, use and thoroughly recommend WordPress, um, which is appropriate for probably 90 plus percent of businesses out there. Uh, it's easy to personalize, easy to use, easy to upgrade, and completely free of charge. I'm talking about WordPress.org. Uh, WordPress.org is where you get the software from, um, and you can actually easily um, upload that to your server. Quite a few uh, hosts have WordPress automatically installed, so you actually have to just click one button. So that's an advantage with using HostGator or VidaHost. Uh, once you sign up with them, you just have to click one button and your WordPress is installed, and that's your content management system. Um, how, how many people here have actually heard of WordPress? Um, okay, that's good, the majority of people. Um, so get the design right after that. Um, the design, um, I'm talking about themes in WordPress. Um, and what a theme is, is in a sense a design structure. Um, and it's a few pieces of code that you can add to WordPress to completely change the look and feel. Um, and what that does um, is it gives you an opportunity to personalize your WordPress. And there are many places that you can actually get um, themes you know, for low cost, 
There are many places you can get themes for no cost. Um, I would suggest going for low cost because then uh, you've got a coder that's probably spent a bit of time in it and it's more likely to be a, a little bit more efficient in terms of loading up and, and better for your users. Um, there are a few decent themes that you can get from Theme Forest um, for less than $50. Uh, Woo Themes um, is another great place where you can get uh, themes from. Um, and I use uh, the thesis theme on 26weekplan.com. Now, the th thesis theme um, is essentially a, a different framework for WordPress. Um, so it changes um, a few of the, the, the features within WordPress, but it makes it very easy to actually customize things. Um, and with thesis, um, they also have their own skins. Um, so the skins are the designs that, that fit on top of Thesis. Um, but if you're, if you're serious about WordPress, I would suggest looking into Thesis and perhaps using that and, and having a skin on top of that. And that, that's certainly what I, what I use. Um, and of course, you don't have to do everything yourself. You know, don't, don't, especially if you're not a coder, um, if, if you're you know, in business, you want to concentrate on the strategy, on the marketing, on the kind of things that are important for you in business. Um, so if that's the case, um, use a service like Odesk. Um, I've got um, four or five people working for me um, all the time on Odesk, um, and they're an, all, all around the world in lots of different countries. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's a really great service. Um, so I thoroughly recommend that um, for getting someone to actually um, install your theme, make your, uh, your theme a little bit more bespoke, whatever you want them to do. OK, so your next stage is optimizing your site for SEO. Um, have pretty canonicalized URLs. Um, so big word there, canonicalization. Um, and what that essentially is talking about is ensuring that um, there's just one version of a URL uh, that the search engines can see uh, for each page. Because a lot of content management systems and the themes and um, default ways of doing things can sometimes throw up uh, different uh, URLs uh, depending on uh, how someone has reached that page. Uh, perhaps there'll be a slightly way, different way of writing that URL if someone's accessed that page via a link from a category or a link to your home page or, or perhaps a link from another site. Um, there could be lots of different <coughs> reasons for that um, and, th and there's no um, reason to go into that um, just now in, in, in great detail. But the important thing is just ensure that you've just got one version of a URL per page and search engines know what that uh, one version should be. Um, the next is relevant internal linking. Um, and what that means, of course, is um, if you've got content um, already up there on your site, um, which is relevant and related to the content that you're writing and publishing at the moment, um, what you want to be doing uh, is linking um, to the existing content that you've got on your site. And what that does is it tells search engines what relates to each other. Um, so you've got a piece of um, content that's, that's particularly pertinent. Um, make sure you link to it. Link to it using a relevant keyword phrase, uh, and then you're signaling to users and search engines that um, those contents are, 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 are definitely related and giving yourself long term a better opportunity for getting those pieces of content ranked. Um, use appropriate tags for search engines. Um, now, um, you know, I could go on talking about SEO for hours. Um, this isn't just about SEO. This is about the, the whole four phases of digital marketing. But in terms of the use of appropriate tags, uh, I'm talking about things like title tags and heading tags. And what they're controlled by um, within uh, WordPress is a few different menus. Um, so you can actually select permalinks in WordPress. Now, if you select a good permalink structure, that's a, per, that, that, that's a permanent URL structure, um, then what that will do is it will give a better to si a signal to search engines what, what your page is, um, and it will, uh, it'll, it'll make them feel that your page isn't going to change at all in the future. Um, so um, always select uh, permalinks within your WordPress settings custom structure, um, and I like this structure here, which is just post name. Um, I like to add .html onto the end of it. So that's not essential at all. Um, but what that would throw up uh, is a URL something like this. So if I had a post titled 
what is a permalink and why does it matter, um, I would want um, the URL to be something like 26weekplan.com slash permalink hyphen matter dot html. It's short, uh, it's unique, uh, but also like, looks like a permanent page as well. So it's more likely to be ranked for the long term. And how do I actually ensure that um, the permalink's quite short? Uh, because by default, WordPress will include the whole post title. So I don't want my whole link to be what hyphen is hyphen a uh, per, uh, permalink. Um, so I use this plugin called SEO slugs. And, and what SEO slugs will do is, uh, is not um, bear in mind all these common words like what is a and, and why does it. So it'll only use words um, that um, are fairly unique and different there. Um, so I think that's the best way of forming uh, URLs. Um, the next thing is relevant internal linking. Um, I use this plugin called Yarp, um, yet another related posts plugin. And um, what that does um, is at the end of each post that you publish, it automatically determines um, which um, posts, other posts that you've published in the past, are relevant to what you're publishing just now and will link to the posts in the past. Um, now, it's, it's a good idea to manually link as well within your articles, um, but this will automatically, at the bottom of your article, go related posts. It's a lovely way of actually getting search engines and users to crawl through the rest of your content that you've already published. And in terms of tagging, um, I mentioned titles and headings. Um, there are lots of different SEO tags. Um, you shouldn't worry too much about, um, but um, there's a nice plugin, WordPress SEO, um, which will um, automatically optimize your different posts to ensure that you do use all these tags that are important to search engines. Um, I mean, just as a brief overview, uh, the, the title, um, I wouldn't have any more than about 66 characters. The meta description, um, I wouldn't have any more than about 150 characters. Um, those are probably the important ones because if you have a look at search results, if you search Google for something, the title and the meta description is what tends to be displayed by Google there. So if you keep that the right length and you, peer to, you appeal to bo both search engines and users there, um, then that will give you the maximum click-through rates um, and that will again be a signal to Google that your content must be relevant um, so it's more likely to rank you higher in the future. And start tracking as well. Um, Google Analytics um, is a great free tracking system. So hopefully, you know, if you've got your site up and running, you're using some kind of tracking system to determine you know, who's visiting your site, um, what they're doing when they're on your site as well. And Google Analytics will show you that as well. Um, you also need to set up goals as well. Um, there are loads of goals that you can have um, within your website. I'm not just talking about selling something. Um, you might have subscriptions. So you might have a newsletter that you're offering. Um, you might have a blog where people are commenting on your blog. Um, you might have people bookmarking your different pages using buttons within your site. Um, you might have feed subscriptions, RSS feeds, um, and of course sales as well. Um, so all these can be set up as different goals uh, within Google Analytics. And it's important to actually track these different things because what you can do is all the traffic that comes through to your site is you can see what the conversion rates are for all these goals. So if you see a, a website in particular um, that's driving uh, maybe 10 visitors to your site every day, but of those 10 visitors, five of them are subscribing to your RSS feed, you know that a lot of visitors that come over from them are very relevant and interested in what you're saying. And you might have uh, another source of traffic that's um, giving you 20 visitors a day, but none of them are doing anything. Perhaps they're only on your site for 10 seconds or so. So, so not all traffic is equal. Um, so have a look into your analytics and determine what's the most relevant traffic. Um, and then you can forge partnerships with people that are, for, that are delivering you the best um, quality traffic. Start split testing. Um, content experiments, um, it used to be Google Website Optimizer, but Content Experiments is now within uh, Google Analytics. And with Content Experiments, you can do A-B split tests. So you can actually do two different versions of a page and you can see what converts the best. 
Um, so that's really important when it comes to e-commerce sites, when you're trying to sell something online. Um, because it's incredible, you know, different title, different description, slightly different photograph, different font color, different font type. It uh, could make an incredible difference. Even the button, the call to action, what's in that button, what color that is. Um, so test different things. Do A-B split tests to actually determine what converts the best. Um, I mean, I've managed websites that's had, you know, tens of thousands of visitors, uh, and I've delivered a 20% increase um, in conversion rates um, from, a, from a conversion rate that was very good to begin with. So don't presume that something is, you know, doing really well. You know, it can always be improved upon.